What's poppin' YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, my name's Nathan and I cover a lot of content on dropshipping, e-commerce, and just how to make money online in general. So today, I have a very special video. I'll be going over exactly how I did $80,000 in sales in just a little over a month last summer. Just before we get started here, I wanted to congratulate the winner of last week's coaching call with me, Cade Lee. So congratulations, Cade. Please send me a message on Instagram. We'll get right in the works of setting up your call. And the same thing applies for this week. If you guys wanna enter to win a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me, all you have to do is drop a comment down below, like the video, and subscribe to the channel. The winner will be announced next week on my video. Without further ado, I'm gonna be breaking down everything in this business from the product to the profit sheets, to the ads manager, to the website, to the supplier info, to our TikTok influencers, and so much more. And I'm also gonna be featuring my business partner, Brendan. He's gonna hop on a quick call for a couple minutes and provide you guys some killer insights and tips onto how we were able to have so much success in such a short period of time. So first things first, I know you guys are gonna to wanna to see the numbers and the breakdown and everything. So here I am on the Shopify dashboard and as you can see, we've done $60,000 US in sales in just a little bit over a month here from June 29th to July 22nd. And the reason why the video says 80,000, if you are wondering, is because $80,000 is the Canadian equivalent to US 60,000. I know it isn't at the current moment, but at the time, the US dollar was stronger against the Canadian dollar, and that's why it was over $80,000 in sales. So as you can see here, this is all legitimate. I'm not faking anything. I'll hit you guys with a refresh if you guys really wanna see that. Um, and yeah, all from online store, there's only one draft order that someone put separately, and then you know some sales trickling in from Reconvert, which is an app that we use, but we'll later get into the apps and everything. Um, so as you can see here, first couple of days we started scaling. So I think the first day, I don't know, we launched a campaign at $50 or something. And you know, as you can see, one sale didn't look too promising, but we kept going and then you know quickly picked up. Um, I think during this time here, we had kind of validated the product was selling. So we were just kind of getting things in place before we really started scaling. And then we quickly scaled up to $1,000 in sales per day. And as you can see, we we're kind of hovering around that $1,000 mark each day. And we slowly started scaling, slowly started increasing as we got more and more data. And you know, here we hit a 3K day, I believe for the first time. And then we kept going here. And then we actually got up to, I think a $4,000 day. Yeah, 4.2K day. Um, but unfortunately, right after that amazing day, we got hit with a major crash, went down to 2000 and then basically fizzled out. Sorry, it was actually this day. I think we were, we were less than halfway through the day. You know, we we're on pace to hit a 5K day. We were really aggressively scaling, which was awesome. But then of course, that's the way the dropshipping game is. You get hit with problems and you know, more fires that you gotta put out. Uh, but this time it was something that we just couldn't deal with. And that's a low feedback score. So if you guys are aware, Facebook basically has this thing called a feedback score and it basically tracks how satisfied customers are with making purchases from you. And so our feedback score dipped below two and it was kind of a new feature that they rolled out at the time that they would restrict advertising access for any business where the feedback score dropped below two. And that's what happened to us. And it was a very unfortunate situation. It was because we had, we didn't do our due diligence. And you know, that was a huge mistake on our part. We didn't hire uh, the correct VAs for this business. We had tons and tons of uh, customer service complaints and, and customer support issues because as you can see, we did do a lot of orders on these products and we just didn't have the right people in place to handle it. We actually had some VAs that we thought were doing a good job and they were re replying with uh, nasty emails to customers. In some cases, they weren't even opening it and they just weren't upholding the uh, customer service side of our business, which is an overlooked aspect, but it is super important. And that's why I always preach about, you know, hiring good VAs, training them properly, or, you know, even doing it yourself if you have the time, because customer service and customer experience is everything. And here's a prime example of, you know, a store that we would have scaled on for another month at 5k days possibly even more and made a lot more money with this particular product and store but this just goes to show an example of where having poor customer service will directly ruin your business and in this case it just tanked the entire thing so now i'm sure everybody wants to see the numbers behind this store and kind of exactly how much money we made so here we go we spent thirty thousand dollars on ad spend and only one thousand dollars on tiktok influencers which i'll later speak on or brendan will and then product cost 
uh, $19,000. And this is what allowed us to be, you know, relatively profitable. As you can probably tell by looking at the screen, we had a 30% margin roughly, which is pretty healthy for a dropshipping business, especially one that's only been around for a month. And the reason why we we're able to achieve, you know, a solid profit margin like that was because of our low product cost. So basically we had a great supplier and a great agent uh, from China fulfilling all of our orders. And this is a supplier that I've personally had a great relationship with for a long time. And I show you guys exactly how to find suppliers just like that one on uh, all the other videos that I post on my YouTube channel. I'll link one here if you wanna check it out later. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the process that I used. I went through AliExpress, found that supplier, uh, hit her up, had a, you know some conversations and then the product that I found which we'll later get into was found from that supplier as well so just you know great things all around there and you know the product cost she was able to source it at a really good price so that definitely saved us a lot of money and then you know the Shopify apps were only around for a month so it's not too much um, payment processor definitely hits a little bit um, and then the refunds and chargebacks uh, definitely hit a little more than usual on this store again because of the um, poor uh, customer service so as you can see, that leaves us with uh, total expenses of $56,850 Canadian. And then of course we did uh, roughly $81,000 in revenue, leaving us with that nice juicy 30%, which is around $24,150 Canadian. And here's the website. As you can see, it's nothing too crazy. I mean, we literally threw this up in like a day or two. Um, so yeah, here it is. Here's an image of a couple TikTok influencers on the main page that we work with. Uh, so this is Kyle Hansen, this is uh, Carson McKenzie, and these guys are based in Vancouver, so they're like me, and you know, they put out a lot of content on TikTok, and so we reached out to them, figured they would make, you know, great influencers for this particular product, and it just worked well from there. We met up at a local beach, you know, I saved a lot of money by not really hiring uh, any professional photographers or video editors. I just went out with my camera, and we snapped some photos such as this one, which definitely helped with our brand image we plastered these all over the Facebook the website everything um, you know tons of good photos as you can see a few more here and it just definitely made for a great low budget shoot and then they went on to post some TikToks and also some Instagram posts of the shorts uh, which definitely helped grow our brand awareness uh, from day one and you know generate a lot of customers and so that's generally how the TikTok went uh, probably will be releasing a full video on how to do TikTok uh, advertising and find influencers and all that stuff uh, in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Um, but it's it's really nothing too crazy. Essentially, you just find people who you think would be a good fit and you reach out to them one way or another. Maybe it's in the DMs, maybe it's by their email. Uh, you know, I have a little script and everything. If you do want that script, it's in the Facebook group that's going to be linked down below. But yeah, those are the TikTok influencers. And as you can see, the, the site's kind of got this cool light blue summery vibe to it. Uh, Aqua Adapt, obviously the name standing for the swim, swim shorts. Uh, you guys have already probably seen them by now. Um, but as we just click into them, you can see that they change color. So that was really the cool thing about them. They're called Hypercolor Swim Shorts. And basically, when they come in contact with water, they switch to a different color. So these are the, I believe we call them the cherry blue because they switch between cherry color and, and blue. Um, and all of you know the different colors uh, change between two different colors actually. And so, you know, I think one of the reasons why this product was so successful, of course, one, because we were able to source it for really cheap. Uh, I think it was roughly, we got it down to around five and a half, six dollars uh, per piece. And then on top of that, um, you know, they have a really crazy wow factor. So as you can see, uh, these are some gifts that we took uh, with our camera. Again, we just did a really low budget shoot ourselves, uh, my business partner Brendan and I, uh, but these gifts definitely worked well to catch people's eyes and attention on the website. And we also use similar content like this for our Facebook ads. And that's why I believe this product was able to sell so well. I mean, it just looks so cool, like looking at these images. And although it is a one product store, people did buy multiple. So, you know, we found a lot of people buying two, buying three, maybe buying some for their family, friends, uh, that sort of thing. And also people wanted the other colors. It was just such a cool thing where, you know, um, they would come on and buy a couple colors and that we, we kind of oscillated between selling them at around $20, 25 and 30. Uh, we were kind of testing out different price points. We didn't really land on one because of course we were selling it for such a short amount of time and we were trying a bunch of different offers, uh, but it all worked out. Um, really well and I guess because the product cost was so cheap we we're able to give a really good deal and then customers were buying more than one the AOV was going up and you know there was just more and more profits um, all around for us so yeah it's, it was definitely a great product selection and again the way that I found it was literally just messaging my supplier 
the one that I found through AliExpress and all she did was she messaged me a list of hot products that are moving in her factory at the moment and she told me oh these swim shorts really picked up in orders over the past couple weeks and boom gave it a go and you know instantly started to have some success right off the bat and that's when we knew this product would really hit and you know we, we tried to scale it aggressively ran into those problems of course um, but you know we still ended up uh, making some nice money on this store and here I am now kind of giving the case study and so as you can see lots of good customer reviews uh, some of these were definitely real reviews um, of you know customers who actually took pictures of their product when they received it which is really nice to see it's awesome when you get organic reviews uh, definitely helps out and then I believe this site was made with the turbo theme uh, it didn't take us too too long at all we also had an affiliate program going again because we were only going for such a short amount of time I don't think this really contributed to much at all if any uh, but affiliate programs are always something I kind of tend to set up once I start to see um, more and more sales uh, rolling in. So definitely would recommend affiliate program. This is by Seco Map. I posted a whole nother video covering that in the other apps as well. And then apart from that, it was just the usual contact us, track my order pages, um, the home page, and just that one product. It was really just based around that one color changing short product that made all those sales and allowed us to have that much success in such a short period of time. Next up here, we do have the ad account. And as you can see, it's kind of all over the place. It's a bit of a mess. Um, there's just campaigns running everywhere. So I'll try my best to go over it in a very concise way. Uh, so as we can see, $30,700 uh, spent, and this is Canadian by the way, and then in terms of uh, the gain, $54,000. Now of course this is nowhere near the $80,000 number. We had a lot of issues with the pixel misfiring and a lot of missed tracks on the purchases. I assume this number is probably much closer to 70, maybe 75,000. Um, but then of course we did get some extra sales from our TikTok uh, influencer efforts. So, you know, not all the sales strictly come from this Facebook ads platform. Um, but you know, it'd be, it'd be kind of silly for me to go through absolutely every campaign. I mean, we can see some have really high ROAS, uh, some not so much, um, but I'll kind of stick to going over at least the, the bigger campaigns or the ones that we ran for the majority of the time. And those are kind of the ones here that hover between the two, two to three, uh, 1.5 to two kind of range, these ones up here. And so, you know, these ones make up the majority of, of what we ran because we can see, you know, $20,000 in, in purchase conversion value just from this uh, one campaign alone. So why don't we start by, by hopping into this one here. At one point we we're running this for 1200 daily, which, you know, is pretty substantial. And yeah, so basically this was sort of a super campaign in a sense where I had all different types of stuff going. So purchase 3%, 3% add to cart, purchase 7%, 1% uh, initiate checkout. I guess this campaign, um, thinking back to it, must have been, you know, all of my best performing kind of ad sets throughout the time kind of compiled into one CBO. And that's, you know, typically what I do as time goes on and, and data gets more and more. Uh, before I reach the point where I'm broad targeting and just targeting everybody with with nothing uh, chosen, I'll usually pick out sort of a super campaign and choose the best ad sets that have been working well for me um, over the longest period of time. And, and here we can see that um, four of them stayed. These four here at the top uh, were probably among some of the best um, ad sets that you know consistently hit that two, two to three row as uh, day, day in and day out um, over that uh, few week period that we were selling it. So apart from that, uh, now that you guys kind of know what I do and I have enough data, I just basically find the best ad sets after testing everything, put them together, and then eventually move to broad targeting. Um, when I initially launch, I just launch with interest campaigns. So I'm trying to figure out if, if one of these is an interest here, maybe this one. Um, oh yeah, so here we go. Here's an interest campaign. So we got summer, swimsuit, summer vacation, and beaches. So I guess this was you know, what I initially had started out with uh, when I began media buying for this store. Um, and as you can see, we had really good results at the time. So a 4.56 ROAS when starting out is crazy. And in, in hindsight, I probably should have let these run longer because as we can see, we didn't even run it for that long. We only got $900 in spend at this crazy ROAS. Um, but I think I was really eager to get to the LLAs and stuff. Um, but you know, if you're getting results like this right off the bat, you know, you have a winning product. And so I think that's kind of what uh, Brennan and I realized with this store. When we launched, it was a great time. Um, you know, people were in the market for this. There wasn't something um, out there that was as cool as this. You know, I think there was another competitor or two at the time that were selling these shorts, but it really wasn't saturated. And so we we're able to see, you know, great returns like this 
right off the bat. So this is what I typically do to launch again, you know, that four to six ad sets, like I mentioned in my previous video on Facebook ads, I'll link it up here. If you guys do want to uh, check that out, or if you've already seen it, you know, I kind of like to do four to six ad sets. Don't overpopulate the initial campaign, especially if you're only spending a hundred or $200 per day. And then, you know, kind of let those run and, and see how the data goes. And as you can see, pretty much all of these hit summer vacation was a little low. Um, but yeah, right off the bat, got really lucky and obviously a great winning product. And then from there, just continue to scale the same way that I teach in that in that video that I linked before. And just the main method that I teach with Facebook ads. <clears throat> of course, there was a, small, a few small things that we probably did along the way. But just the general launch and scale strategy was the same as my previous video. Um, and moving along from that campaign we can see you know just tons of other campaigns similar all these cbo 100 100 yun express and worldwide ones are going to be the interest targeted ones the reason why i said yun express here is because i think we we're using that shipping line that's an express shipping line from china so at the time we were targeting uh worldwide customers um or places where we could ship to uh with yun express and then i think as time went on we narrowed down to us and canada in some of these uh newer um campaigns over here and you know just for less headache and just faster shipping times and you know it's just easier to keep it in in less countries i guess uh, but when starting out we did we did go worldwide in young express and i think that's also when starting out why we had um better ROAS because sometimes you can get better ROAS worldwide sometimes you can get better in the u.s depends on your product depends on your market you just got to uh give it a go and uh, try to figure it out so that's pretty much it for the uh, ads manager. Again, I'm sorry, there's there's so many campaigns and everything and, and it's been a while since I've looked in here, um, but I hope that kind of gave you a good general overview of the media buying for this store. Now that I kind of went over everything with the store, I feel like it'd be a really good opportunity for you guys to learn from somebody else. So again, my business partner, Brandon Jorson, is about to be hopping on here for a couple minutes and he's just gonna provide his insights and his tips and, and what he believes allowed us to get to where we were with this store and how we we're able to scale up so fast. So he's been a long-term business partner of mine. We actually grew up together and got into business together. He's been in business for quite a long time and he's got tons of experience. So whatever he says, you better listen up because it's tons and tons of value. Hey everyone, my name is Brendan. I've been business partners with Nathan for a few years now and we've done everything from reselling clothes and sneakers to starting a social media marketing agency and now we've been on to drop shipping. I'm really excited to come on here, talk to you guys a little bit about Aqua Adapt, what we did really well, some things that we could have improved on and just giving you an, a really good insight into what, what made us so successful. Now, the first thing that I would say is finding a really good agent, finding someone that you can trust and finding someone who's going to work with you to lower prices and understands that as you order more that your price needs to come down. And this is one thing that a lot of dropshippers completely miss out on is remembering that your agent can lower prices. If you can get your product for a dollar less and you're selling 10,000 of them, $10,000 back in your profit, in your in your pocket, sorry, that can, that can be the difference between turning a profit and losing money, right? So it, having a very reputable supplier is, is definitely key. And the other thing that they did was she, she sent us product for us to take pictures of. And that's the other thing that made us very successful was having professionally looking product pictures that we did ourselves. And the reason why you wanna make sure you do it yourself is because we ran into this issue as well, is we were taking other people's content for one of our other stores and they came after us and we ended up having to pay them. Now, we learned our lesson with that. We never wanted that to happen ever again. And it was for that reason that we wanted to make sure we had great product pictures. And for those product pictures, what we decided to do was reach out to a couple of up and coming influencers that we saw a lot of potential in. These were two guys from TikTok who now have 1.5 million followers and 100,000 followers on Instagram. This was great for building trust amongst people, amongst our customers with our brand. And the other thing with building trust is you have to remember there's people who are getting a lot of messages or a lot of people are getting people are getting a lot of advertisements from tons of different brands and you need to set yourself apart. A great way to do that is by being trustworthy, making people feel like they can trust you. And if in your ad you have your own content that clearly isn't some ripoff from, from AliExpress or a carousel of random images you found on Google, that's gonna help with that so much. Because remember, 
first impressions matter and your very first impression is that ad. And speaking of ads, one of the one of the huge things that we had to learn very fast is you have to take your own biases out completely out of the entire process of drop shipping because when we were running ads, there were some times where we thought, hey, this ad is not very good, but hey, let's give it a shot. And it turned out to be our best converting ad, made us tens of thousands of dollars on, an, on a piece of content that we thought wouldn't go anywhere. So remember to take out your own biases. The final thing that I felt we did really well was keeping everything simple. We didn't go and find a bunch of products that happened to be in our niche and try to shove it in our, in our customers' faces. We focused on one product, which was the color changing swim, tr swim trunks. Now, yes, we had lots of variants and we also had kid sizes because a lot of adults love buying matching clothing for them and their kid. And this is, then we, we made sure that anything we did find to work, we didn't change it. We didn't try to make it better. We doubled down on it. And that was so key to our success because a lot of times people keep looking for, oh, this ad is doing well, well, let's make it do better. Let's make it do better. You have to be okay with how something is going because if you change it, you have to remember the algorithm learns. It learns how to run ads for that specific ad set. And if you keep changing, you keep messing with it, it's going to have a hard time. So if something's working, instead of changing it, double down on it. Continue with what is working. Thanks to Brandon for those really key and valuable insights. Feel free to check him out. This is an Instagram. This is his TikTok. He posts a lot of great content and he's just an awesome entrepreneur in the space. Again, I'm going to be continuing to run multiple businesses with him in the future. Awesome guy. Check out his stuff. That's pretty much all I got for you guys for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I put a lot of effort into showing all that stuff for you guys. And I just always want to provide to you the best content on dropshipping e-commerce and how to make money. If you guys did enjoy the video, please drop a like, please subscribe, and also please comment if you want to win that one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me. I've been having some great conversations with you guys, so don't forget to do that. And please share the video, you know, turn on the post notification bell, just help me out. I've been growing so much and I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. And the more and more that you support me, the more good content I can keep putting out for you guys. So thank you so much again for watching the video and we'll see you next Monday. Peace.